Amen. Amen. If you have your app or if you have an app, let's just open it to 2 Kings in your Bible. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 8. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a noble woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room in the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand and a wi-fi so it will be when he comes to us he can turn in there and check his facebook doesn't say that in the bible does it verse 11 and it happened one day that he came there he turned into the upper room and he laid down there and then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite woman. And he called her, she stood before him, and he said to her, say now to her, look, you've been concerned with us all this care. What can I do for you? And we'll just stop there. Please read the whole story. Uh, we don't have time to read the whole story right now, but read it at your earliest convenience. We will go straight into the Word of God. If you're taking notes, let's title this uh, short talk. We will call it consistent in commitment. To be consistent in your commitment. This is a very amazing story of a man of God named Elisha who carries this powerful anointing from the Holy Spirit and as he is walking by a Shunammite woman is noticing him and she sees that he is a holy man of God. That means he is powerful, he is anointed and she looks to her husband and says, hey why don't we invite him over for lunch. So they invite him over for lunch and Elisha kind of get into a habit of coming to lunch for this woman's house. They were pretty wealthy so they were doing good. After some time when he was coming for lunch, she looks at her husband and says, hey why don't we make a room for this guy. So not only he comes for lunch but he has his own guest room, a bonus room. He goes up there, he takes a nap. If he needs to stay over, it will be like his own little room that he has an access to. It will be his. The husband looks at her and says, you know well, that's a great idea. The only problem is we don't have an extra room. No problem. We can make an extra room let's make an extra room let's hire the guys who will bring the material let's get the blueprints let's get the architectures let's get the constructor men here and let's build an extra room and so they build an extra room and lo and behold Elisha comes into the house and the bible says he lays on the bed that was made for him and he asks this question what can I do for you See we all love for God to ask that question of us. How many of you here would love for God to say, what can I do for you? Have you noticed that Elisha did not ask that question when he was invited for lunch? It was when he was laying on the bed that was given for him that thought came to his mind. See many people they set beds in their life. We either have a bed of commitment to God or a bed of a compromise to sin. When we set a bed in our house called commitment to God, God will come. And not only He will come, He will come and He will have a question for you. How can I help you? When we set up a bed in our house called the bed of compromise, demons will come and they will ask a question, how can I wreck you? But God wants us today to set up a bed in our house, a bed of commitment. Is anybody has a bed in their house for God? When I say bed, I mean a time committed to God. When I say bed, I mean that your finances go to God. When I say bad means that you don't just live for yourself but you live to see people saved. When we live that kind of a life it provokes God to ask this question, how can I bless him? A few days ago when I just uh, came from Massachusetts I decided to take my wife on a little date and to take her to Red Lobster. God bless Red Lobster. On the way to Red Lobsters there was a, a lady standing on the highway 
not on the highway but on a ramp and she had this sign something about that she was asking for money and I'm usually not one of those guys who gives money I just give people food but because I don't have food most of the time I don't give anything but my wife she's more generous one and so she's like roll down the window give him some money and so she pulls into the envelope and you know it had bigger currencies and so and she gives five dollars to this lady who was begging for money she didn't do anything for us um, she was just turning and begging but we gave her because my wife was nice we go into the restaurant and there was another guy in the restaurant who was waiting on us meaning he was serving us he would bring us food he would keep asking this is the food all right how are you guys doing um do you guys need, need anything else and so he'll keep asking and he was really really nice he served the food was nice and then after he was done he brought the check and he left and i gave this guy five dollars but he never asked me for five dollars he served me so well it caused me to give something he was not asking for blessings from God we get two ways we beg them or we serve for them this woman she needed a son and the prophet comes into her house lays in her house and rests and calls her in and says hey is there anything I can do for you she says nope do you want me to connect you with the president or the king and the commander of the army that's like connecting you with Steph Curry and President Barack Obama God bless Steph Curry or Russell Wilson that's like connecting you with somebody who is like the champion or somebody who is like the famous or the wealthy person in your nation because Elisha had connections so he's like hey is there anything I can do do you want to have a lunch with the president because I can arrange that I just want to be nice to you because you've given me a bed and I just want to give you something in return she says no need I'm cool I don't need to meet with the president I'm loaded I'm fine no need and so she walks away and then prophet finds out that this woman did not have a child but she never asked for a child and she comes back and he tells her this he says next year at this time in your hands you will have a child how could God answer a prayer you don't pray when you give him a bed and he lays on that bed God begins to get crazy questions how can I bless you how can I meet the needs you don't even want to admit you have them how can I give you dreams fulfill the dreams you put aside because you wanted to honor God see God is not a greedy stingy spoiled God is a generous and a good God he made everything in abundance have you ever thought of the fact he made enough oxygen for every human being have you ever thought of the fact we don't have to wait for you to quit breathing before I start? Anytime you give God a bed or you give God time during the day, you give God your tithes or you start saving souls, I want to let you know you are touching a heart of somebody who is extravagant, abundant and extremely wealthy. And don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you provoke him. And he begins to ask you questions and he begins to give you things you didn't even dream of because you knew you couldn't qualify for those things because that's just how our God is be a person who gives God a bed and you will see your suppressed dreams you will see the things other people chase after and you don't mind having them but you know they're so outside of your reach and God will make those and greater things become a reality in your life can somebody say amen amen you know when this woman was standing in front of the prophet and the prophet asked what do you want you gave me a bed you gave me a room why and I love her answer she said I didn't put you into my house because I needed something from you I put you into my house because you're a holy man of God there is nothing wrong with having a hidden dream but when you have a hidden agenda you will never be committed to God consistently 
Many people commit to God with a hidden agenda. That means a boyfriend broke up and so you run to God to mend the need just for a moment. You're not worshiping God because He is God. But you're worshiping God because you're hurting. So tomorrow you stop hurting and guess what happens? You stop worshiping. And for God, the only way to make you keep worshiping is to make you keep hurting. And God doesn't like people to hurt. But it breaks the heart of God to know that people give him a bed because they need something. God is more than excited to bless you. But he doesn't want you to serve him because of something. But because of who he is. Can somebody say amen? Don't manipulate God. I've seen so many young people who come to God who are at church every day. The reason why is because they don't have a job. And then when God blessed them and gives them a job, you won't find them on the planet earth with the FBI search mechanism. They disappeared. They went off the radar. I'm talking about people that our leaders gave cars to. I'm not talking about people that just get a job. I'm talking about a people who get a brand new or a nice free car. You would think this would challenge somebody to worship God the more. Only those who worship God because of who He is will worship Him the more if they get blessed. The rest of us will walk away. Don't be committed to God because you need something from God. Nothing wrong with having hidden dreams but if you have a hidden agenda, a first bump on your road, you will fly away from God. Can somebody say amen? Make a room for God. Have a clear motive in your commitment to God. And the best way to know your motives is when times get good or where times get hard, what are you gonna do? Now think about this. This woman does not have an extra room for the prophet. So she has to make an extra room. So she made an extra room. Now she gets a child. The child grows up. Now how many of you know that a child needs his own room? This is a perfect moment to give a prophet three-day notice. <laughs> prophet, you blessed us so much that you don't have a room no more. This is the perfect moment to say, prophet, until you came, we didn't need an extra room because we didn't have a kiddo. But now your guest room has to belong to our son. Could you please find another house to go into? What we find in this case is when the boy was a teenager, the prophet still had his room. Because the woman didn't put the prophet inside of her house because she had free space. She put the house and the prophet in her house because she honored and she saw he was a holy man of God. And when things were good and she was doing really, really good, she still said, it belongs to God and God is, in going, is going to be in my house, period. If John Rockefeller, who according to, if, if you check, take, take the inflation today, he is more wealthy by 10 times than the wealthiest man in the world today. So take the inflation and take his wealth at that time it was 360 billion dollars he was worth if john rockefeller having so much money 10 times more than the bill gates from seattle would not miss one sunday service would be on the church board teach sunday school lessons and sometimes volunteer as a janitor in the church. He could buy new churches every week and still wouldn't go broke. Why could God bless a man like that? Because that man knows one thing, whether I have 360 billion or 360 cents. I belong to God and there is always room for God in my life. Can somebody say amen? People say that, I got really hard times that's why I left God. It's not hard times that cause people to leave God. It's that hard times reveal people have wrong motives. When Job went through hard time his wife came and says opt out leave God. 
and Job says you speak like a foolish woman I don't serve God because times are good I serve God because God is always good when times are hard or when times are hard and I'm gonna have to die and I'm gonna have to face him and I want to face God that I loved and worshiped not only when things were good but also when things were tough when you place your relationship in God based on your circumstances that means when circumstances change you're gonna have to change your relationship when you place your relationship on God and the fact that he is good he doesn't change he is loving that God never changes therefore your relationship with him whether life here goes here or here or here your relationship remains the same because it's anchored on him not on life it could be that a sickness, the pain, the heartbreak, the drug addiction or some other things push you to God. But please don't make your problem a source of your relationship with God because you will never be committed. Never be consistent. Only people who make God the source of their commitment will be consistent. Can somebody say amen? We see this woman, she makes a commitment to God and not only she makes a commitment to God which is good but she is consistent with her commitment the boy grows up becomes a teenager starts to go and help his father and one of these days he didn't wear a hat didn't stay hydrated and he got a heat stroke his head start hurting he comes back to his mom and his mom holds him, gives him more water, keeps him in the shade and lo and behold he closed his eyes and his heart stopped beating and he died. And the Bible says this woman takes that son and guess where she brings that son to? She brings it to the room, surprisingly she still has. The boy is a teenager. This is at least 15 years yet all 15 years she didn't sell the room didn't lease the room didn't rent the room and didn't give the room to the boy and because she has the room out of which the boy came in the first place she takes the boy that is dead and drops him right in the same bed out of which came the question what can I do for you I want you to write down four things that consistent life brings into our life. Number one, when we live consistently with God, we have a place to bring our problems to. When you live your life not just wishy-washy with God, not just convenience with God. If I feel good, if I have enough money, if I feel like inviting my friend to church, if I feel like going to Friday night prayer, if I have enough this, enough that. But if we live a life like this woman, 15 years I still have a room for the prophet. Something happens. When the problem happens and they all do, you have a place to bring your problems to. Many people don't have a place to bring their problems to. So guess what they do with their problems? They carry their problems. Have you ever tried to carry something heavy? You can do that even if you're the strongest one of us. You can do that for a few minutes but after a few minutes what happens to you? You get tired. You can be rich and tired. You can be cute and tired. You can be educated and tired. That's why in America, United States people, a most percentage out of any nation in the world, we have people taking antidepressant pills. Why? Because, not because our problems are bigger. It's just we don't have a place to place our problems into. You need to have a place where you bring your problems. Where you bring your relationship issues. Where you bring your emotional problems. Where you bring your maybe struggles and addictions. But if you have a bed, that you dedicated to God you know a place where you bring the problem to can somebody say amen the second thing that having a consistent life brings is after she brought her dead son on the bed something else happened the Bible says after that she called her husband and says I need to go see the prophet he said what happened is this Christmas Easter she said no I just go need to see him now imagine this your son is dead not sick with fever not fall asleep because he's tired this guy is out and your husband is asking you why do you need to see the prophet and the woman says I just go need to I just need to go see him she doesn't tell her husband the real reason 
when asked what's going on this is what she said all is well who in this wide world could ever say all is well if your baby is dead only a person who left a dead baby in the hands of a living God why did she leave the dead baby in the hands of a living God why did she bring the problem to God because she was good at bringing good things to God and she's now in the habit of bringing bad things as well and she has a positive confession she didn't have a positive confession because she read positive books she had a positive confession because she surrendered her life committed and consistently not just for a season not just because she was single and not ready to mingle not because she had no boyfriend and so Jesus Christ had to fill in the spot not only because she was broke like a joke she was actually wealthy but because she made a decision God is a God of universe and I am going to be committed when things are good or things are not so good and she gives her problem to God and God in return gives her something so powerful he gives her peace that produces positive confession positive confession now I believe in positivity but if your positivity is not rooted in your commitment to God your positivity is like the one of Goliath remember when Goliath Goliath was very positive he faced David and he was so positive he thought he's gonna squish that little boy his positivity is overwhelming he says I'm gonna take you take it down and he just he's just talking smack that's positivity on steroids the only problem with Goliath is Goliath was positive out of his cockiness not out of his commitment Goliath had no commitment to God so his positivity how long did it last until he met a man who was positive because of his commitment to God David was committed to God all his teenage years but David wasn't a negative naysayer David wasn't pessimist David was a positive man but his positivity was based on the commitment to God I know it is popular today to be positive. I see I'm so blessed by so many of you guys posting such a positive quotes every day. Especially those of you who, who know that your beautiful face doesn't get a lot of likes so you add a good quote. It increases your chances of getting more likes on Instagram. Lord have mercy on your poor soul. And half of the time you don't know whether people like the picture or the quote but you don't care you got the likes it's the truth your positivity if it's not based on your commitment to God it will land you in the same place it landed Goliath positive and broke positive and lonely positive and popping the depressing pills positive and drinking because not enough happiness positive and constantly attracting bad relationships positive and constantly miserable because my friends positivity in itself is not a force when it comes from the commitment to God only then it has power because somebody say amen let's put our hands together for the Lord <laughs> write down number three write down the result of consistency number three is you will get a fighting faith not only you get positive in your problems but you get a fighting faith this woman she gives her problem to God because her life is committed to God and God gives her peace which results in positive confession but not only she gets positive confession like some of us and we kind of sit on the sidelines and we just confess it, possess it, blab it, grab it, name it, claim it and we just kind of walk around blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed and that's all that we do but she did not do that. She said all is well, give me a donkey. Why you need a donkey? I need to go see the prophet. Well if all is well why do you need to see the prophet? I can't talk to you about this why because you can't do anything about it she settles a donkey goes to the prophet and prophet sees her sends his servant and says go talk to her is everything okay with her is everything okay with her son 
is everything okay with her husband so the little servant comes and says hey he's asking is everything okay with you is everything okay with the son is everything okay with the husband all is well move out keeps going forward comes to the prophet and she grabs the prophet's feet and that's what the servant came is wanting to push her out he was the usher he wanted to push her out like in our prayer lines and the prophet says wait wait, wait hold off hold off this woman something crazy is going on here and she looks at him and he says you know what the son that we have he is dead and you need to come to my house and you gotta see him the prophet says great sends a servant says my servant will go lay my staff and your son will be raised from the dead she says nope that's not how you're gonna do it i gave you a room you don't send a servant to my room you are gonna go to my house she said whoa the servant goes to the house lays a stick nothing happens and she stays with the prophet you see this tenacious persistent attitude why anybody who is committed will be persistent where did she have the boldness in her faith see many people's faith is weak link I think some of the spiders have more power than some people's faith. So weak, so struggling. But if you will see one thing about struggling faith, it always is struggling because the commitment is struggling. When you are strong in your commitment to God, your faith will be also strong. I remember when I was facing, uh, I was preaching at one conference and the last service of this conference, it was the largest conference I've ever spoken to. A lot of pressure there. Because I was supposed to speak in a very small service and on the way there I found out that the guy who was supposed to be speaking on the last service he was supposed he God uses him to heal people a lot and like on a very big scale and he got sick and not only he got sick but he wasn't able to come so on my way to the conference they said hey Vlad no pressure but you're gonna take his place and we made the announcement that all the sick people are coming so you're gonna have to do the healing part too I was like no problem great we can do it of course and I remember the right before the service and I'm so nervous. I am so confused because I don't know what to preach. I'm like this is I need to pull up my best sermon because I had this like weakling sermon prepared for the smaller service that came the night before but I'm like for this evening service I need to have this best powerful sermon. So here I am they're trying to pray and, and, and I, I just can't pray. I decided to take a nap. So I took a nap right in the office right before the service. I woke up and I remember the Holy Spirit put something so softly on my heart. He said Vlad the hardest thing you ever done is not to speak in front of a thousand people it's when you gave certain amount of money you almost died I was like yes God that was the hardest thing he said relax everything else is piece of cake that's exactly what I felt and after that the cheesy word that I thought would be cheesy Holy Spirit just put on my heart preach that cheesy word it ain't gonna be cheesy I got up there and honestly I felt like a lion I walked in there like as though I walked to just five people instead of just a big auditorium I never apologized that I cannot heal the God can heal and he healed people there and everything was fine why because see when you're committed you can't help but to have some kind of a faith when you're radical in your commitment to God you don't have an option not to have faith see because we pray in the mornings I don't have an option not to believe that people won't be saved I don't have the luxury of not believing that God won't take us to something awesome and hundreds and thousands will be healed. Why? Because when you're committed, you will have faith. Can somebody say amen? You want to grow your faith? Stay strong in your commitment. Last thing, what helps us when we get consistent is we get consistent miracles. Listen to this very carefully. This woman gives a bed she first gets a miracle that she gets a son the second miracle she gets is she gets the son raised from the dead the third miracle she gets is that in chapter 8 of Kings it says the following Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life saying arise and go you and your household and stay whatever you can for the Lord has called a famine and furthermore it will come upon the land for seven years. This is so incredible. A famine is coming to Samaria and most of you who read the Bible a little bit you remember this famine. The reason why because it's the famine where in the Bible mothers ate their children. It's where people ate the waste that came from doves and they sold it on a market. This famine was so severe people were going mental. And this famine was coming for seven years. Guess who wasn't there? Elisha came and gave a little secret says between me and you. There's bad stuff coming. 
pack your bags run as far from this place as possible for seven years after seven years come back why didn't other people know about this famine when you're consistent you don't just get a miracle you get miracles and the interesting part she comes back after the famine and so it happens that the servant that laid the staff on her son and couldn't raise it from the dead who eventually got leprosy because he was doing some other shady business here he stands before the king and tells the king all the stories of the Elisha's miracles and gets to the story of a Shunammite woman and says hey there was this woman she couldn't have kids she gave a prophet a bed we lay there he slept on this bed and then he get this crazy idea to give her a son God give her a son raises the son from the dead and he gives her a prophecy to escape to Samaria she escaped and lo and behold she walks into the courtroom why does she walk into the courtroom because when there was a famine all of her property was confiscated and she comes back and asks can I get a house and when the guy tells a story the king listens and she walks in the king opens up her heart and says I want you to give her all the property she's ever had every single thing she's ever owned let it be restored to her you want to have consistent miracles it never comes to a life who's not consistent with God consistency with God now I know you may be looking right now you say you don't understand I got problems to my throat God has more promises than you have your problems if you only trust God and you don't give five minutes to heal your life if you gave Satan 25 years to destroy it but you be patient with God and you say God I'm gonna commit my life to you and when I go to college I will have a room for you when I move out of this city I will still have a room for you God when I get married I will still have a room for you God when I get a Mercedes I will still have a room for you God when I'm gonna be popular I will still have a room for you and God if life happens and I get broke and on a sick bed I will still have a room for you when you make up your mind God says okay if that is your resolution let's add not a miracle but miracles into your life provision protection God wants to save people in our church not for a season for a lifetime when we started miracle catches two years ago a miracle catch is last month of every last week of every month we have a special service where we invite our friends I remember talking to my friends in Massachusetts and I was talking to one of the guys I was like you guys have to have a service where you invite unchristian friends he's like we did that but it didn't last after a few months we stopped and I remember in the back of my mind I'm like why didn't we stop why can't we stop why you know why we can't stop because God gave us that calling and we know when we remain consistent in our calling God will always do his job being consistent in miracles always maybe you're tired maybe life has been too hard on you maybe life has been uncertain maybe you're hurt a little bit offended in some way maybe it's just too tough the enemy wants you to quit the life of consistency because he knows there's miracles that are yet you don't even have problems yet that God has miracles for consistency commitment and consistency is what brings miracles and God's favor into our life can somebody say amen anybody will be consistent in this place